Okay, hello YouTube. In this video we're going to be talking about positional chess. Uh, so what is positional chess? Uh, positional chess is anything that has to do with ideas that are not strategic. So what is strategic chess? Strategic is planning. So like if you have a position where you're attacking the king side, the queen side, the center, that's strategic chess. Um, if you have a position where you have a clear plan and your opponent doesn't, that's strategic. So what's positional? Positional is anything that doesn't have anything to do with a plan. So if it doesn't have anything to do with a plan, like if it's a doubled pawn, isolated pawn, weak square, uh, bishop versus knight, bishop pair, that's all positional. So if you have a bishop pair and your opponent doesn't, that's a positional advantage. Now positional advantages can turn into strategic advantages. Positional advantages can be combined with strategic advantages. And there's a lot of crossover between positional and strategic, which is why these terms get kind of muddy and they get thrown around a lot and they don't have clear definitions. But for the most part, strategic has to do with plans. Positional has to do with, uh, positional has to do with like, uh, uh, weak squares, weaknesses, and things like that. So the game that everybody learns to kind of learn about this is this game Morphy versus Anderson. Begins e4, c5. We have a Sicilian. Uh, knight f3, knight c6, d4, cd4, knight d4. Now this game, it was one of the earliest Sicilians that ever got played. Uh, and it was an incredibly influential game. People are still learning from this game today, uh, you know, over a hundred and, uh, I guess, 170 years later. Uh, actually, 175 years later uh, now, this game was played in 1858. It was Morphy versus Anderson, played in Paris. So 175 years later, people are still learning from this game. Uh, we are still learning about uh, 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 positional ideas from this game. Uh, Anderson plays this move e6, and then Morphy does something that was very un-Morphy-like. Morphy plays this move knight to b5. So why is this move un-Morphy-like? What was Morphy famous for? Morphy was famous for developing pieces rapidly. Morphy was famous for gaining tempos, gaining time. Uh, Morphy was famous for developing quickly and whipping up these super strong attacks and beating all of his opponents. So what did Morphy just do? Morphy just moved a knight out, moved it a second time to capture a pawn, and is now moving it a third time. And... Morphy never did this. He would never move a piece three times in the opening. Why is he doing this? He's doing this to attack this weak square. Morphy recognizes that there's this weak square on d6, and he needs to attack it. So that is a positional weakness. The square on d6 is a positional weakness. What does Morphy want to do? He wants to occupy that square with a piece. And he wants to occupy that square with a piece so badly that he's willing to move the same piece in the opening three times, which is something that Morphy never did. So what does Anderson do? Anderson tries to kind of cover that weakness. He plays pawn to d6 so that Morphy can't occupy it. So then Morphy just attacks it again, attacks it directly. So Anderson has to cover it again. He plays e5. Morphy retreats his bishop. But ah, guess what? Now Morphy has a new weakness he can look at. He can attack the d5 square. Because when that pawn moved from e6 to d5, now d5 is weak. Okay, great. What does Anderson do next? Anderson plays this move pawn to f5. This move is a mistake. It's a positional mistake. Even though Anderson is aggressively attacking the center of the board, which you would think, well, strategically, the center of the board is really important. Of course it is. But positionally, look at the scores he just left behind. Now, e6 is permanently weak. d5 is still permanently weak, and he's not trying to cover that with a piece or anything. He should have spent a move, instead of playing pawn to f5, he should have spent a move just developing this knight to f6 and trying to uh, put some pressure on d5 so that at least he's covering d5 with a piece now that it's a permanently weak square. But instead he plays f5, and Morphy just develops another piece. He just plays knight to c3, threatening to play knight to d5, and just occupy that weak square on the d5 square. So now we have pawn on f5 to f4 by Anderson, making yet another pawn move. And what does Morphy do? Bam. Occupies the weak square on d5. Just plays knight d5, occupying that weak square. He says, I don't care about the bishop on e3. If you want to take it, you can take it. So we have Anderson playing f takes e3, and then Morphy flying in with knight to c7 check, and then we have Anderson playing king to f7. Now, so here we have an interesting move from Paul Morphy, because he could have just played knight takes rook and gotten some of his material back, and as a matter of fact, the like the modern engines, they kind of confirmed that knight takes rook was probably the best move. But I think we almost learned more about how Morphy was thinking about chess, and we almost learned more about chess from the move that Morphy did play, uh, which is he can just continued with the attack. He played the move queen f3. Uh, which which allowed Anderson a chance to, to, to possibly equalize if he'd played everything absolutely correct. So what is Morphy trying to accomplish with this move queen f3? Well, he's trying to take advantage of the fact that he has positional dominance over all of the weak squares in black's position. He's trying to take advantage of the fact that his pieces are incredibly well placed for an attack. Uh, so he feels like there's more in the position than just taking the rook. Keep in mind, Morphy is saying to himself, I think my knights 
just where they're sitting and where they're placed and the weak squares that they're occupying, I think they are worth more than a rook. I don't want to take the rook because I don't want to spend a move to take the rook and then have to move my knight back to its really good square. I think my knights sitting where they're at are worth more than a rook. And he was very close to being correct. Uh, and, and, he, and he ended up winning the game. So in that sense, he was correct. But, but Anderson had one slim chance to, to maybe get a draw. So, so queen f3, we have knight f6, bishop c4. Again, look at this beautiful occupation of all the weak squares. And then we have knight d4, which turned out to be the only correct move in the position. We have knight f6 check by Morphy, which was very, very good. And then we have this d5 from Anderson, which again turns out to be the only correct move in the position. If Anderson had played king g6, the game is basically over. Like queen h5, king f6, knight e8 check, and then black has to sacrifice a whole queen. Black is lost. So moving pawn to d5 is absolutely correct. And then we have bishop takes d5, and now Anderson blunders. He plays king g6 and ends up with a losing position. What he should have played was king e7, and uh, black is uh, dangerously close to being uh, completely equal. So king e7 was, was worth a shot. Like, he could have tried king e7, and that would have been interesting. But he missed king e7. Instead, we have bishop to d5, uh, king to g6, and Morphy continues with queen h5 check, king f6, and pause the video and see if you can find Morphy's next move. Morphy just plays f captures, e3, kicking that knight off of the d5 square and threatening all kinds of stuff. Notice the dominance of the position here. This knight is still controlling that weak e6 square. The bishop is occupying the d5 square. The rook is threatening to go to f1 and continue with the assault against the black king. This game is basically over. Anderson decided to resign. He said, that's it. I've had enough. I can't stop the rook from coming to the f file. The game is going to be over. Uh, he resigned out. He made one more move. He played knight c2, king e2, and then resigned. Uh, so why didn't he continue here? Well, let's just give a sample line. Uh, knight, knight takes a1, rook f1, uh, bishop f5, uh, we could have queen f5, king there, and then queen to e6 mate. And notice this just beautiful occupying of all of the weak squares in black's position that he weakened early in the opening and now are being occupied by white pieces that are now delivering checkmate. Um, so that's this is the game that we all learned, uh, uh, you know, since it was played, really, to learn about the very basics of what a positional weakness is in chess. Anderson started out with a weak square. Morphy tried to occupy it. Then Anderson ended up having to create a few more weak squares. Then Morphy simply occupied those weak squares with pieces and was able to flood in with all of his pieces, get a beautiful attack, and uh, checkmate uh, Anderson uh, kind of in beautiful style. Uh, so anyways, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope you learned something new about chess, and I hope you can use some of these ideas in your own games. Thank you very much for watching.